there, TCC. Welcome to church. We're so glad that you chose to join us here online today. My name is Ty, and this is Becca, and we have just a couple of announcements to share with you before we continue with our service today. Hey guys, so glad to be with you here today. It's hard to believe that this is the time of year where our ministries are slowing down for summer because there is seriously so much coming up in the next couple of months. That is so true. First of all, I want to make sure you know that you are invited to join us tonight, May 16th, for our Songs of the Heart Worship Night, featuring the oldies but goodies of church music. That starts at 6 p.m. in our South Campus. Also, this is the last week to get your graduates info to the church office to be included in our graduate celebration video. So if you're a part of our TCC community and you have a student graduating this year, be sure to get that to the office as soon as possible this week. Next Sunday is going to be a super exciting day for TCC because not only are we going to be welcoming some new members to our congregation during our in-person services, we are also going to come together to witness a few baptisms. Yeah, this is going to be an awesome time and anyone is encouraged to join us for that special time about 15 to 20 minutes before the start of our North Campus service. I absolutely love seeing baptism and witnessing the life transformation and public profession of faith that it represents and I'm just so excited for that next week. Well, there are lots of other ministries and events taking place on campus and otherwise. For example, we're still taking registrations for camps and VBS. Slots are filling up quickly, so if you want to send your student to camp this year, be sure to get them registered soon. And if you have any questions or want to sign up to be a counselor at Wagon Train or volunteer for VBS, get in touch with me and I'll get you all the info you need. Okay, one more thing. I want to make sure that you know, in just a couple of weeks, we're going to start our summer service schedule, which means we'll hold only one in-person service each Sunday with all of TCC. This will continue for 10 weeks starting on June 6th for the first five weeks we'll be out at our beloved Shady Oak campus and then we'll likely move indoors for the second half of the summer when it gets really toasty outside. Now, the summer service will all be held at 9 a.m. so that you can beat the heat. And if you've been attending online because you're uncomfortable attending an indoor service, this is your chance to join the rest of your church family for the series of outdoor services. And if you'd prefer to continue to tune in online, that's fine too. We'll still offer our online service right here each week. If you have any questions about this, feel free to contact the office anytime. We are really looking forward to coming together as one big community this summer and hope that you are able to join us. And like we mentioned before, there is a lot going on at TCC. I encourage you to stay up to date with your weekly emails sent from our office each Thursday. Those emails contain all of the latest info and dates you will need to know for all TCC related topics and events. That's right. And we will, of course, continue to bring you these charming announcements each week as well. Well, regardless of what you choose to participate in this season, we are so glad that you are here today, that you continue to choose to join us for church and ultimately invest in your relationship with our loving Father. Exactly, Becca, because that's what it's all about. That's the main thing. That's why we do this online service and our on-campus ministries and events, because we want you to experience the love of God in ways that transform your life and, in turn, the lives of those around you. So let's make that our focus today as we go to Him in worship. I invite you to join with us now as we declare our praise to our Savior, our living hope. Hallelujah to the one who sets us free. Take it away, team.
Good morning to everyone watching and welcome to Tulare Community Church. My name is Mario Flores and I am one of the pastors here. If this is your first time joining us, we would like to welcome you to the family. This is a safe place to worship and to know Jesus. And this morning we are continuing our sermon series that is working through the book of 1 Timothy, an epistle written by Paul to his colleague in ministry, Timothy. Last week, Pastor Ryan introduced us to the first half of chapter four and what a great message that was. And today we will be looking at the second part of chapter four, starting in verse eight and ending in verse 16. Our time this morning will be spent on what Paul told Timothy to focus at the end of chapter four. But before, let's recap quickly on something Pastor Ryan shared with us last Sunday. Pastor Ryan mentioned that there are all kinds of pressures trying to distract the church from the main thing. And that main thing is Jesus. This is happening right now inside the church. There are so many oppositions coming against the good news of Jesus. The prosperity gospel, cultural and political pressures from both right and left, liberal theology, and other denominations that preach the characters of God but don't teach the deity of God. There are things that sound good but truly are not. When they leave out the cross and the resurrection, they actually are missing the mark. You see, what Paul is preparing Timothy is for this life and the life to come. The more we focus on our spiritual maturity, the more we realize how much God truly loves you and I. We cannot earn his love. It's been given to us freely. Let me make sure I make this clear. This is not a try harder message. This message is, not, is open your heart to the love of God, the love that has been given to you and I. The love is found when we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us to understand the love and power that was given to us through the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The call to pursue godliness is to respond to what Jesus did for you and I. Paul is concerned with Timothy's physical and spiritual being. This is true discipleship and can only be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. We when we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, we open ourselves for the Spirit of God to develop our spirit, soul, and body. We actually, we actually allow the Holy Spirit to build all of us when we start to think and respond more like Jesus. You see in verse nine and 10, it says it clearly. This is a trust trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. This is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the savior of all people, especially of those who believe. God is alive, and his desire is to dwell inside of you and I. This is, a power, this is powerful when we start to realize that it is not by our might or by our power, by, but the spirit of God that actually starts to live out in our lives. A church without the power of the Holy Spirit is not the church. It becomes a social club. When we lay down our differences and seek 
the truth and the spirit of God and all we do, then we will be known as true worshipers. But the hour is coming now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I've coached basketball for 13 years or so. And as an assistant coach and a head coach, I was a part of amazing teams that won many titles for the first eight years of coaching. We tasted success as a program, but after a few students graduated, we started to lose that competitiveness drive to win. We started getting players who thought only about themselves and coaches started to leave one by one. And in the fall of 2018, I became the head coach at Mission Oak High School. And I said we would need to start changing the culture of this program and return to those glory days. I had a hard time breaking the pride and losing mentality of our athletic department and basketball program. I had to teach my captains how to lead their teams. We started having 5 a.m. practices, running a lot, let me tell you. A lot of weight room before and after practice. We went on retreats, shared with them the importance of serving each other, not because we have to, but because we get the opportunity to. And what changed? We started winning games that we shouldn't have won. We started winning tournaments we shouldn't have won. We came two points away from winning a league title. We made the playoffs for the first time in four years. When we focus on what really matters, things start to become about what is important. We start to reflect Jesus when he is the focus point. When we put Jesus first, he is seen in our speech, our conduct, our love, purity, and faith. When we can show the world that our God is alive, this is not a try harder message or get more involved with church groups. But this is a message to understand what Jesus actually did for you and I on the cross. This is a response to what he did on the cross for you and I. When we truly start to understand what Jesus did for you and I, then we will start to truly understand our freedom we have as sons and daughters of the Most High. People are dying to, tr dying to become the best versions of themselves. People are dying to try to become the best versions of themselves. When in reality, the only way they can even come close to something great is by knowing Jesus. See, our maturity in the Lord matters. In this way, we become examples of Jesus. I am not saying we need to live a perfect life, but what I'm saying is people are watching, so let's give them Jesus. When we let God into all of our areas of our lives, he starts to heal us, so in response, we get to show who it, the healer is to others. See, in verse 12, it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech and conduct and love, faith and purity. This verse doesn't have an expiration date. It doesn't matter if you are two or 62. God can still use you today. It is time to stop neglecting our spiritual gifts. It is time for us to be diligent in these matters so that everyone can see God is real. Watch your life and doctrine and preserve in them because when you do, you will save yourself and others. Because the Spirit clearly says that in later time, some will abandon their faith. And let's remember, as you and I seek godliness, let's remember who Jesus is. He is God. He is the maker of everything. He is a true light. He is the lamb of God. He is the God, the chosen one. He is the rabbi. He is the Messiah. He is the one Moses wrote about. He is the son of God, the king of Israel. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is good news.